We're going to begin a tour of one of the most modern automotive manufacturing plants within General Motors, the Oshawa Truck Assembly. Oshawa Truck has earned a number of awards over the years for both productivity and quality. We see the examples of its fine work every day in the vehicles that we sell and service. I must say how impressed I was to see the organization and coordination of activities within the plant, particularly considering the number of elements and parts that are required to actually build a truck. For example, the plant itself. It covers an area of some 3.1 million square feet. Or put it another way, just imagine 83 Canadian football fields side by side. The plant builds only four-door, half-ton, two- and four-wheel drive short box extended cabs. 80% of production is Chevrolet. The remaining 20% is GMC. The plant operates three equal shifts per day, employs 3,200 hourly and 275 salaried workers. Daily production is about 1,302 units with a capability of 1,428 vehicles. 85% of its production goes to the U.S. market, and it takes about 20 hours to build one truck from start to finish. To make all of this productivity possible requires a lot of planning and coordination with suppliers. Three railway lines bring in the sheet metal and frames. 38 transport receiving docks surround the plant. Some 2,000 parts are used per vehicle. 250 transport trucks unload each day. Employing a just-in-time inventory management system, the plant maintains a four-hour bank of major material. It takes a great frame to provide a strong foundation for a GM truck, and we have a great truck. The frames are delivered to the plant by rail car. Two types of frame are used, one for two-wheel drive and one for four-wheel drive. An overhead crane picks the frame from the rack and places it on a pedestal on the floor. A frame carrier chassis AGV or automatic guided vehicle moves in to pick up the frame for the start of the assembly process. The carrier automatically moves out to the staging area. Construction actually starts with the frame upside down to facilitate easier attachment of the various components. The first stop is to have the rear leaf springs attached to the frame. You can see that the hangers of the leaf spring are color coded and in this case they're blue. Both sides must match up to ensure that the proper springs are installed. Next we move to the front hub installation. This department also installs coil springs if the truck is a two-wheel drive. Remember, four-wheel drive use torsion bars for springing. This is a two-wheel drive. You can see the coil springs being added. From here we go to exhaust systems. And don't we wish it were this easy to do at replacement time? The rear axle is installed next. They arrive in the plant fully assembled from an outside supplier and in build sequence for installation. Each unit has a barcoded label attached to it which is scanned to ensure that the proper axle is being installed in the correct truck. Computerized scanning also permits easier tracking of units if a recall were required. Next, we see the front differential being installed in a four-wheel drive vehicle. And while it may appear that some parts are not being bolted on, the actual bolting into position may be done at the next workstation. Two types of prop shafts are used in the pickups depending on the engine size. Here we see the aluminum one used with the 5.3 liter V8. And as you can see, it's relatively lightweight. Next we have the two-piece steel shaft that's used with the 4.3 liter V6s and the 4.8 liter V8s. Of course, the fuel tank is an important addition, and it goes in next. Now, once the major underframe components have been installed, we have to turn the frame right side up in order to add the rest of the drivetrain. The frame goes back on to the same AGV to continue the assembly process. We saw the front and rear brakes being installed earlier. Now we see the brake evacuate, fill, and test being done. First, the air in the brake lines is evacuated. A valve is opened and brake fluid is drawn in. The system is then pressurized up to 119 pounds per square inch. 
so any leaks will create an audible tone to alert the operator that something has not been properly fastened. The system is pumped up three times and then subjected to a final high-pressure test. Once passed, a computer stamps the inspection card. If this process were not completed or approved, the vehicle would not be released for shipping at the end of the line. Engines used in the Oshawa assembly come from Romulus, Michigan and St. Catharines, Ontario. Here we see one of the special engine carrier AGVs moving in for pickup. The next stop is transmission installation. The operator removes a shipping cover prior to mounting to the engine and tightening down. And here, the transfer case for a four-wheel drive is being installed. Installation of the starter is completed as a one-piece action with equipment specifically designed for that function. The engine wiring harness is next, and as we saw earlier, verification by scanning is done to ensure use of the proper harness for that engine. Crossover pipes are installed and secured, followed by the serpentine belt and the engine fan. The engine is now dressed and it's ready to move on to be married up with the frame. At this point, the prop shaft is installed to the transmission. Next is the installation of the radiator support module. It's received from the supplier complete with headlights, windshield washer bottle, radiator hoses, and fan shroud installed. It's manufactured specifically for the vehicle it is installed in as determined by a sequencing list sent to the supplier by computer, either Chevrolet or GMC. And finally, we have installation of the rear step bumper. From here, our unit goes to the marriage station where the body is attached. Pre stamped panels are delivered by rail from one of two U.S. plants. They are on specially designed carriers for efficient handling. The plant maintains approximately four hours of material. One of the first parts to start construction of the cab is the cross sill. This operation is typical of assembly jobs in the body shop. The operator loads the parts onto the welding platform where the robot takes over doing the required spot weld and then moves the parts to the next assembly area. The advantage of pre-stamped parts is simplified assembly. The body shop is where we see the greatest application of automation and robotics. 435 robots are used in the body shop area. No manual welding is done. The truck floor pan is constructed using two pieces of stamped steel. Here we see the front half being loaded onto a carousel along with some mounting brackets. Next is the rear half of the floor pan being loaded for welding to the front portion. You can plainly see the rear sill. The floor pan then goes to have the seat mounting studs attached. This is a great example of the precision of robotics. The inner shell of the truck cab is called the bird cage. At this station, the rear cross member is being attacked. It's at the multi-welder where we really can see the robots in action. Each robot has a specific job to do in a specific sequence. By the time the body's assembled, it will have approximately 2,400 precision welds. But just because the welding is finished, the job is not done. Each unit must undergo perceptron vision gauging. This procedure is necessary to ensure the dimensional integrity of the finished product. The cab is checked using laser cameras that are trained on locating pins or holes in the cab 
Over time, a gradual shifting occurs in the cab dimensions. This is picked up by the cameras and is corrected to maintain the strict tolerances required in the finished product. Front doors of the truck are attached to the cab using temporary hinges. As you're going to see later, the doors will be removed for assembly while the interior of the cab is being finished. The assembled sheet metal of our truck then goes through a series of dips or baths. The body is submerged in large tanks in a nine-stage process of dips and rinses called Elto phosphate. This is designed to both clean and prime the metal prior to painting. The phosphate cleans the metal, 